Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless well mine's a little dark i just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event mm -hmm. this is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict um, there are a number of cons uh, concerns that i have that factor into that not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. Even people who do not believe in Jesus Christ and the end times know something is very wrong with our world. As of late, I have been hearing from so many people that 2024 will be the year when America goes over the edge. We are on the verge of World War III. Our financial system is teetering on the brink of disaster. Homelessness is rising at the fastest pace ever recorded. Drug and alcohol abuse are off the charts. Lawlessness runs unchecked. Food banks are facing unprecedented demand for their services. And it's not just happening in the United States. It's happening all over the world. I believe that 2024 will be the most chaotic election year in the entire history of our nation, with many saying the U.S. is heading for civil war. All of this is happening in the global framework of wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine and natural disasters, all of which are happening more frequently and more intensely. A perfect storm is raging all around us, Billions of people have become deeply concerned about what the immediate future will look like. The global agenda for a one world government, a one world financial system, and a one world religion are already set in place. All the world needs now is for the Antichrist to make his appearance onto the world stage. All of this can only point to one fact. The rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the Antichrist are just a heartbeat away from becoming reality. The Bible warns of the times we are living in, and God through His grace and mercy has showed us the end from the beginning. And now His watchmen are blowing the trumpet. Jesus is coming for the believer. No more pain or sorrow, but for the unbeliever, there will be misery and grief. Buckle up and hold on tight. By looking at world events, it seems probable 2024 will be the year when everything converges, and with it the rapture, the seven-year tribulation, and the revealing of the Antichrist. Luke 21.36 Watch therefore, and pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Are you ready for what comes next? U.S. officials are closely watching the Chinese military's meteoric growth. It's happening on multiple fronts and fast. The U.S. and China, two superpowers on a collision course over the future of Taiwan. The Pentagon claims China is increasing its nuclear arsenal at a much faster rate than the U.S. anticipated. Nuclear attack by North Korea against the United States or its allies or partisans will result in the end of whatever regime were to take such an action. As the conflict rages on between Israel and Hamas, Russia is waging a major new offensive in eastern Ukraine. 69% of Americans surveyed said they are worried the invasion of Ukraine could lead to nuclear war. Ten armed robberies within a 30-minute period on the northwest side. An absolute threat. A Chicago-area Louis Vuitton raided by 14 hooded suspects, making off with over $100,000 worth of luxury items. A flash mob-style heist at an Oakland-area Nordstrom. Yes! This New York jewelry store, windows smashed in with hammers. Federal authorities and retailers are now sounding the alarm about the growing danger of organized retail crime that is sweeping the country. 
In China this morning, a powerful earthquake has killed more than 120 people and injured hundreds more. The death toll from that powerful quake constantly rising. More than 2,000 people now known to have been killed. There is utter devastation with entire communities flattened. Earthquakes in Turkey and Syria one week ago are now among the deadliest of the century. Officials say the confirmed death toll has now risen to more than 35,000 people. The dire emergency in East Africa, the drought there exacerbating the hunger crisis. As many as 20 million people could be starving by the middle of this year. There's a stark warning tonight that millions of children in Yemen could be pushed to the brink of starvation. We turn this evening to the urgent warning now that four countries are on the brink of famine. The war in Gaza has left more than 570,000 people starving. Where hundreds of thousands of people, many trapped by conflict, are facing extreme hunger and death. A dire new report on land turning the desert across the globe. 2023, the hottest year ever on Earth. Oh, my God. A year of climate and weather extremes. In the U.S., the number of billion-dollar disasters tallied 25 more than any other year. New Year's rang in with thousands of records shattering across Europe. At least eight countries had their warmest January day ever. Back home, things were no better. A siege of atmospheric rivers lashed the West Coast through March. Destructive flash floods swept through parts of California burying the Sierra under 60 feet of snow and brought a historically dry Tulare Lake back from the dead. When spring arrived, so did the tornadoes. The strongest and most devastating twister of the year was a ferocious EF4 tearing through Rolling Fork, Mississippi, carving a 59-mile path across the state and packing winds as high as 195 miles per hour. Just days later, a two-day tornado outbreak spawned the third largest outbreak in U.S. history. A shift to the east in what's known as the traditional tornado alley is making higher density and more vulnerable populations a target for these types of disasters. In June, wildfire smoke was choking the Big Apple, making it seem like a Mars landscape, shrouding iconic landmarks like the Statue of Liberty and Empire State Building. Both Chicago and New York had the dubious distinction of worst air quality in the world during that hazy week. Climate change making wildfire smoke outbreaks more frequent. As northern cities suffocated, southern cities broiled under relentless days of dangerous heat. At the end of July, Phoenix hitting a record 31 straight days of 100 degrees or hotter. The previous record? Just 18 days. Miami's extreme heat and tropical humidity resulted in 46 days registering a heat index over 100 degrees. More than a dozen U.S. cities recorded their hottest summer on record. The tropics lit up in late August when Hurricane Adelia rapidly intensified over the Gulf of Mexico, striking North Florida as a high-end Category 3 with winds of 125 miles per hour. Fueled by record warm sea surface temperatures, the fourth most active in history. By November, the brutal heat plaguing the U.S. was now broiling the southern hemisphere. The heat index in Rio de Janeiro hitting an astonishing 138 degrees, the highest ever recorded there. And for the third year in a row, deadly tornadoes ripped through the south just days before Christmas. 2023, experiencing so many extreme weather events, we couldn't include them all here. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Tonight, new video capturing the moment missiles rain down on Vilgird, Russia, a border city just 25 miles from Ukraine. It's one of the most severe attacks carried out on Russian soil since the war began. 
Footage showing explosions in the middle of town with cars and buildings on fire and black smoke rising across from a Christmas market. This man horrified and saying on his cell phone footage, there are dead people lying there. Everything is smashed, glass everywhere. Russian officials say more than a dozen people were killed, including children and more than 100 others wounded. It comes days after Ukraine claimed on Tuesday it carried out an airstrike, destroying a Russian Navy ship in Crimea. The Kremlin saying Ukraine is also to blame for the attacks today that come one day after Kyiv and cities across the country saw one of the biggest attacks by Russia since the war began. Kyiv's mayor calling New Year's Day a day of mourning as more than 30 people were killed and more than 100 injured across the nation. Another reminder that the war in Ukraine is showing no signs of stopping as it closes in on its second year. Así queda acordado. In a rare emergency session on a weekend before New Year's, Russia summoned the UN Security Council Saturday night to lay blame for the attacks on Belgorod, not only on Ukraine, but also on the West. We have heard reports that the UK and American consultants took direct part in organizing this terrorist attack, and they regularly encouraged the Ukrainian government to carry out bloody crimes. Responsibility for these crimes is also borne by EU countries, which directly and irresponsibly continue to supply the Ukrainian ruling elites with weapons. The Russian ambassador held up a QR code in the Security Council chambers. On it, these pictures of what he called a terrorist attack perpetrated by Ukraine that killed more than a dozen people, including children. But just 24 hours earlier, it was Russia who launched massive coordinated missile attacks on Ukraine that killed over two dozen people. The UN said it cannot verify claims of how many people were killed in recent attacks, but called for de-escalation on all sides. We inequivocally condemn all attacks on cities, towns and villages in Ukraine and in the Russian Federation. Attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure violates international humanitarian law are unacceptable and must end now. Ukraine's representative didn't directly mention the Belgorod strikes, but continued to say Russia needs to end the war. Once Russia's bloody war is over, there will be no more human suffering, no more civilian casualties in Europe, and no more reason for further Security Council meetings on this issue. In the past three months, Israel's war on Gaza has taken up a lot of the energy and focus of the Security Council. But as the year winds to a close, it's clear that the war between Russia and Ukraine will likely play prominently on the Security Council's agenda in the year ahead. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says U.S. policy towards the Korean Peninsula is making war inevitable. Kim was speaking at an end-of-year Workers' Party meeting in Pyongyang. He said deployment of U.S. military assets in the region had turned South Korea into an American military base. Kim also announced he'll no longer pursue reconciliation and reunification with South Korea, blaming defense ties between Seoul and Washington. North Korean state media posting a lengthy statement essentially in capturing a five-day key political party meeting that wrapped in Pyongyang, which covered everything from the economy to military goals in the new year and the food situation. But what's, ca uh, what's catching the eyes of those in South Korea is North Korea ruling out a peaceful reunification, uh, saying that a military usurpation is the only viable option. Now, Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea is quoted at characterizing the nature of relations between South and North Korea as uh, no longer that of kin or of blood, but of two hostile countries, two belligerents at war. Also saying Seoul is a colonized state under Washington, reliant for its security and national defense. KCNA also uh, signaling three new satellite launches in 2024, drone production and other preparation for what it views as inevitable war on the peninsula. And we're also seeing signs of 
North Korea tightening its grip on North Koreans accessing any outside South Korean dramas, for example, content of passing out death sentences for watching that. So with this morning's announcement, it appears that North Korea is further solidifying and formalizing its distance and detachment from South Korea. 682 combatientes. Military drills taking place near Venezuela's border with Guyana. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro is calling it a defensive exercise following the deployment of the British Royal Navy patrol vessel, the HMS Trent, to the waters near the coast of Guyana. It is the threat of the United Kingdom against a noble, peaceful, but brave people, the people of Venezuela. We spoke with foreign ministers and with prime ministers here and there. They all demanded that Guyana stop the arrival of this threatening ship, and Guyana has privately ratified that it will receive the threatening ship of the decadent British ex-empire. Tensions between Venezuela and Guyana have been on the rise over the Esquibo, a large jungle region which has been contested by both countries for decades and was found to host vast oil deposits off its shores in 2015. Guyanese officials have denied making any actions of provocation against Venezuela, but have also defended the arrival of the British warship to Guyana, calling it a routine visit. All right, we've probably all been so focused on what's going on in Israel with Hamas and the threat of the expanding war with Hezbollah to the north and what's happening with all of these uh, rebel groups in Syria. But has anyone been looking at what China has been doing? Uh, 43 planes, seven ships near Taiwan as we speak. Um, maybe they're seizing on, on, on the notion that maybe we're preoccupied or the world is. Gordon Chang. Uh, it's probably the most re remarkable people to read China that I know of in my years doing this job. So what do you make of what they're doing? I mean, this is more than provocative behavior. This is something that's almost a daily occurrence. Yes, and it's not just Taiwan, Neil. Um, what we saw, for instance, at the end of October with regard to the Philippines in the South China Sea, Scarborough and 2nd Thomas Shoals got very close to war. Matter of fact, President Biden on October 25th actually had to speak from the podium at the White House and warn China that we were prepared to use force against Beijing uh, to do, uh, defend the Philippines. So it's gotten to be a very serious situation where China's been ignoring our warnings, escalating all throughout East Asia, and that means that we are pretty close to conflict. Do you know anything as well, Gordon, about their, uh, their more of their ships are in the neighborhood? Uh, around the Middle East and particularly around the Mediterranean, on top of what we have with the USS Ronald Reagan and the USS Gerald R. Ford, uh, keeping somewhat of their distance, but they're, they're in the neighborhood. Yes, they are. And they did this in uh, 2013 at the height of the Syrian uh, civil war when they brought um, their most impressive looking ship at the time into the eastern Mediterranean as a warning to the United States and NATO not to intervene. And I think they're probably doing that again because they've got six vessels in the region. Um, and I think that's their playbook, especially because they're working very closely with Iran and working, of course, with Russia. So you have an axis that is challenging the United States across the board. We seem to be more focused for the time being on, on dealing with Israel, uh, holding off, you know, Iran. Um, but when it comes to Iran, I certainly know the Russian ties. What about the China ties? Uh, China's increased purchases of uh, Iran's oil, uh, which are subject to U.S. sanctions, by the way. But that's giving a critical lifeline. And by the way, we are seeing North Korean weapons in the hands of Hamas fighters. We're seeing Chinese weapons in the hands of the Houthis. The Houthis are now fighting Israel. And also Hamas has some Chinese weapons, which probably are leftovers from a little while ago. But the point is that China is supporting the attack on Israel across um, many domains. To the latest escalation in the Middle East, Iranian-backed militants on boats in the Red Sea attacking another commercial ship. The militants firing at U.S. helicopters who responded with deadly force. We're closely watching tensions in the Red Sea after the U.S. Central Command announced for the first time that it killed Iran-backed Houthi militants who were trying to attack a container ship in one of the world's major trade routes. 
This morning, as threats of a wider escalation in this war loom large, the U.S. military for the first time saying it killed Iran-backed Houthi rebels in the Red Sea after coming under attack while responding to a distress call. U.S. Central Command saying Navy helicopters acting in self-defense after being fired upon responded by sinking three of four small Houthi boats that were trying to attack a container ship. All crew members were killed. The fourth boat fled. So far, the U.S. has only publicly announced shooting down Houthi-launched drones and missiles. It's the second time in 24 hours that U.S. forces have come under attack by the Houthis in the Red Sea. The U.S. Central Command earlier saying an American missile destroyer shot down two anti-ship ballistic missiles fired from areas controlled by the Houthis. Altogether, the Houthis have launched at least 23 attacks on the Red Sea since the Israel-Hamas war began. In a rare interview with ABC News this week, Houthi leader Muhammad Ali al-Houthi signaling that the attacks would not stop as long as Israel continues its offensive in Gaza, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appearing steadfast in his mission to destroy Hamas. <laughs> now vowing to take back control of Gaza's border with Egypt, saying the corridor should be in Israeli hands, as that's the only arrangement that ensures demilitarization. Netanyahu also saying the war against Hamas will continue for many more months. And guys, back to those tensions in the Red Sea. So far, no response from the Houthis after this morning's deadly confrontation. But on Friday, the militant group had warned the U.S. against any escalation towards its people. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay. Moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind, that his true intentions are death destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance 
is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.